The first thing that we can do here to get Auth0 included in our application is we can change up this login screen that we've been using up to now, this custom built login screen. We can change it up with the one that we get from Auth0. When you create your Auth0 account, you get this classic Lock.js based login screen by default. However, my suggestion is to use the newer one, which doesn't have any JavaScript, so it's much more lightweight. The only caveat with this is that you're going to need to rely on Auth0's hosted login page to do authentication for your app. So whereas with the Lock.js widget, we could bring this into our application, we could install Lock.js in our React code base, and then we could set up some code to open up this lock widget. When we use the new universal login, we have to go over to Auth0's domain, after which we will be redirected to our app. Now Auth0 definitely recommends that that is the approach you take, and I recommend it as well. It's a much more secure way to do authentication. It also means that we've got a lot less code to bring into our app to make login work. And in fact, there's just one library that we're going to need here on the front end, and that's going to be called Auth0 React. So come to your terminal, open up a new window, and we can cd into orbit app. And let's do npm install at auth0 slash auth0 react. The main job of auth0 react is that it gives us this hook that we can use so that we can do things like check if the user is authenticated or we can send them to the login screen. We can do all of those things easily with this custom hook called use auth0. So to get ourselves started here, let's set up the Auth0 provider. Let's go into the React application. We'll go into Orbit app, and then into Source, and into App.js. Then up at the top here, we can import the Auth0 provider. So we'll do import Auth0 provider from at Auth0 slash Auth0 React. So just like we have been using our own custom built providers down here at the root of the application, we've got our auth provider, our fetch provider. We're going to essentially wrap our application in the auth0 provider. So right up at the top level, let's put in auth0 provider, and we're going to need to give it some configuration. So we'll take the other end of auth0 provider and put it down below router. And the two pieces of configuration that we'll need for now will be the client ID and the domain. So we can do domain is going to be equal to our domain, our Auth0 domain. We'll go over to the Auth0 dashboard to get that in just a second. And we'll also get the client ID. Those two pieces of information can be found here in the application section if we go over to Orbit app. So right up here, we've got domain and we've got client ID. Copy the domain first, paste it in, and let's do the same with the client ID. This client ID here is a public ID, so there's no worries including it in the front end of your application. It's going to end up in the user's browser. They'll be able to see this ID, but that's okay. It's meant to be public. So why don't we save that and we'll see if we can refresh the application and if we get any errors. So the login screen is still loading and we'll just make sure we can get to the home screen. Now my recommendation is that you keep these IDs, any of these parameters in fact, anything that's going to be used for the configuration for Auth0, that you keep all of these in your environment file. It's a much better way to keep things tidy, especially since you're going to have multiple different environments that you're going to want to target. So we have our local environment file here, but you'll have a different environment file for production. And in fact, you'll probably have a different Auth0 tenant for your production environment versus your dev environment. So why don't we copy this over here? We'll take our domain first. In fact, we'll just cut that out. And let's go into .env.local. And then down below here, we can say react app auth0 domain. That's going to equal our domain. And then the other variable that we'll want will be for the client ID. So we can copy that down, replace domain with client ID. Go back over to app.js and you can grab the client ID from there. So let's save the environment file. We can close that now. And going back to app.js, we can now put in process.env.react app auth0 domain. And then just the same thing for the client ID. We'll replace domain with client ID. So let's save that. And we'll actually restart the application just to make sure we've got everything running with the latest environment file. So opening up the terminal, we can get rid of where we just installed Auth0 and we can go back to our React app. Let's kill that process and we'll do npm start.
So it looks like we're all good to go. The next thing we'll do is we'll get this login button sending our users over to Auth0 to authenticate.